In this video, I'm going to show you how to rotate a shape around a point. And the only tools that we're going to use for this one uh, will be, as the paper here shows, we're going to be using a protractor and we'll be using a ruler. So those are the tools that you need to become familiar with. Uh, everybody needs to know how to measure uh, lengths with a ruler and angles with a protractor. Uh, that's an important skill for people to have. When we're doing rotations, there are three things that you need to know before you can actually do the rotation. Number one, you need to know what is the point that everything's going to be rotating around. And here in this little problem, it tells us that we're going to be rotating the shape around point D. So it's actually one of the corners or one of the vertices of this rectangle. Point D right there will be our center of rotation. So point D will stay in place the other points will be spinning around point D. Two other things that you need to know is you need to know which direction are you going to be rotating. In this example we're going to be going counterclockwise. A clockwise rotation goes just like the hands of a clock, that would be clockwise, but a counterclockwise rotation is going the opposite of the hands of a clock. Counterclockwise rotation is like this. So this is the kind of rotation that we'll be doing today in this video. We'll be rotating this shape counterclockwise, not like that one there. And finally, once you know what you're rotating around, once you know which direction you're going, that you're going counterclockwise, finally you need to know how many degrees will we be rotating and we'll be going 45 degrees. So this shape, this whole shape is going to be rotating 45 degrees. Before we start, we should try to visualize what this answer is going to look like, what this shape will look like after we've rotated it 45 degrees counterclockwise. So counterclockwise is this way. If we were going to rotate this shape 90 degrees, we'd take this rectangle and we would rotate it up about like this. So after a 90 degree rotation, the rectangle would kind of be oriented upwards like this. But we're not going 90, we're going half of that. We're going 45 degrees. So instead of going all the way up here, we're going to end up just rotating to about right there, about half of 90. So what this rectangle is going to do is it's going to rotate about like that. Notice my thumb is not moving because my thumb is on point D, the point of rotation, the center of rotation. So the rectangle will kind of be drawn like that. So that's what we need to visualize first. We're rotating that whole shape. Unfortunately, and this is where I think sometimes students get a little confused or get overwhelmed, we can't just rotate the whole shape. We're going to have to rotate each of the corners one at a time, or each of the vertices. So we're going to rotate A 45 degrees counterclockwise around D. Then we'll rotate point B 45 degrees. Then we'll rotate C. 45 degrees. So we're actually going to have to do this in three steps. This part is not essential, but sometimes people find it helpful to color code. So we can think of point A, I can color code it red, and I don't know how well these colors will show up in the video, um, but we'll color code that one red. I'm going to make point B green, and point C I will just make that one purple. If you can't quite make out the colors in the video, um, just keep that in mind that color coding is an option. And point D, I won't color code that one because that one's not going to move. So let's start with point A. We're going to rotate that one. Um, the most confusing part of a problem here, I think, the place where students really get hung up, is figuring out, okay, there's my protractor, where do I put it? And how do I line it up with the rectangle? And I think this will be very helpful to you. Every protractor will have a center right here. Mine has a little hole poked right in it. Sometimes there will be a little triangle or some sort of an arrow pointing to this center point. And the important thing to keep in mind is through this whole problem, this protractor, the center of the protractor is going to stay on point D the whole time. It will never be anywhere else. You'll never move it up to point A. You'll never move the center over to point B or C. This is going to stay at point D every time you use the protractor. It'll stay right at the center of rotation, which, like I said, in this case, is point D. All right, now, well, how do I line it up? If we are going to move point A first, let's line the edge of the protractor up with point A. 
just like I did here. Now, this is another place students get confused. Should you line it up with point A like this? Or should you line it up with point A like this? And the way you could think of it is, if we line it up with point A like this, and we start here at zero, and we're going to rotate it 45 degrees, we go over 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 45 is halfway in between, we'd be going right to here. If we rotate over this way, was that clockwise or counterclockwise? And going this way is clockwise, which is not the way we're supposed to be rotating in this problem. So, let's try it the other way. Still have the center at point D, the center of rotation. Lining up with point A going the other way, and this time I'm going to use the inside numbers of my protractor. Going over 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 45 is halfway in between. Which way am I going now? Now I am going counterclockwise. So this is the way you want to line it up. So let's measure over that 45 degree angle again. Starting from here, zero. Let's go over 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. 45 is right there. I'm going to put a little mark. That's not where the new point A will be. But that mark right there will help me to draw my line. And let's draw a line now from that mark I just made back to point D. And so now, I know, based on the measurement with my protractor, that I just rotated over exactly 45 degrees. So when we rotate point A over 45 degrees, it will fall somewhere on that line that I just drew. But the question is, where is it going to be? And the answer is, it's pretty easy. Rotations never change size. They never change distances. They never change lengths. The shape, the rectangle, is going to be the exact same size when we're done. So whatever the distance is from D to A originally, D to the new point A, or A prime, that distance is going to be exactly the same. So let's measure this distance from D to A. And when I measure it here, it looks to me like it's one, two, three and a half, or 3.5 centimeters. So what that means is, when I measure over on our new line, where's the new point A going to fall? It is going to fall that exact same distance from point D. So there's zero, there's three and a half, and so that right there, that is going to be my new point A. And we don't just call it new point A, technically it is going to be called A prime. So that little mark there means it's A prime. There's our new point A. And if you'd like, we can keep that color coding. The red point A goes over to our new red point right there. So that's it. We just moved A over 45 degrees counterclockwise. Next step, let's move point B. And the nice thing about it is once you understand how to move point A over 45 degrees, you're going to do the exact same thing with point B. Nothing will be different. So let's start by drawing a line from D out to point B. Oops, I just moved my ruler a little bit. That's not good. That's better. So there's my line from D out to B. Let's do it exactly the same. Where do I put the center of my protractor? Well, just like I do on the entire problem, I put the center of my protractor at the center of the rotation, which again, in this case, is point D. If I'm moving point B, let's put the, at the edge of my protractor, this line going out here, let's line that up with point B. And how many degrees are we rotating? 45 degrees. So let's go over 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and I'll put a little mark. Now I realize that you probably can't see the numbers on my protractor, but you'll just have to take my word for it that I'm going over 45 degrees. I'm going to put a little mark right there. And just like I did in the last problem, let's connect that mark back to point D. So when we rotate point B, it will fall onto this line somewhere because this line is 45 degrees away from this line. But where exactly will point B 
B on that line and again the answer is whatever the distance is from D to B originally we're going to keep that same distance in the new rectangle so let's measure this and it looks to me like the distance from B to D is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 looks like that is 8 centimeters 8 centimeters so the distance from D to B prime or the new point B is also going to be 8 centimeters so there's a little mark right there at 8 and I'll color code it again it's not, this isn't critical you don't have to do this but green goes to green if it helps you go ahead and do it so red went to red green goes to green and that is our new point B or officially called B prime and we have one more step to do let's move point C and just like we've done the whole time let's start by putting the protractor down the center of the protractor goes on the center of rotation point D if we're moving point C let's line the edge of the protractor up with point C which I've done right there and we're going over 45 degrees so from here that's 0 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 halfway in between right there is a 45 degree angle let's draw a line from D through that mark I made and now I know that this line that I drew is exactly 45 degrees away from this line from D to C I rotated it up 45 degrees counterclockwise when we ro rotate point C over it will fall onto this line somewhere how do we know where and again in case you haven't figured it out already whatever the distance is from D to C originally the distance from D to the new point C will be exactly the same so when I measure it it looks like it is one two three four five six seven a little greater than seven let's call it seven point two centimeters is the distance from D to C so the distance up our new line from D to the new point C will also be seven point two centimeters which is right about there one two three four five six seven and a little further 7.2 is right there we can color code it point C was purple the new point C we, we can also make purple and the new point C is called C prime so the final step all we need to do is just connect our new points so we'll connect A prime to B prime We'll connect B prime to C prime, C prime to D prime, and D prime to A prime, and there's our new rectangle. And to make it stand out a little bit more, I can darken it in with another marker. So that's our new rectangle, right? there. Rotated from here, point D stayed in place, A, B, and C all rotated up 45 degrees and there's our new rectangle after a 45 degree counterclockwise rotation around point D. I hope this made sense, I hope this helps you. You can watch it again if there was a step that was confusing, but really once you figure out how to rotate one point, rotating the other points are done exactly the same way. So hopefully that helped out and good luck on your problems.